we need to have apostolic influence in every single aspect of this world. Mm. Um, because in every single job and every single part of this world, there, there are people who need to hear about Jesus. Welcome, everyone. Today, we have a special treat for you. We are joined by the one and only Kristen Kum. You may know her by her Instagram handle, Darling on a Dime. Along with managing that account, she serves in the music and children's ministry at her local church in Washington State. We had a fascinating conversation about the genesis of her Instagram account, how being an apostolic and an influencer has led to unique ministry opportunities, why you need to follow your God dream, and much more. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. I'm really honored to be here. It's it's really cool uh, getting to chat with you. I, I guess not necessarily in person, but here online. After uh, my family, we followed you for a number of of years on your social accounts. My wife, she was the first one to point you out to me. I think it was it was one of the videos. I think we re- referenced it later in the conversation. So I don't want to talk about it yet. But okay. it's really cool to to chat with you today. Cool. Thank you. I'm excited. I had I didn't know you guys were following me for that long, so that's cool. Oh yeah, for sure. Well, <laughs> um, would you mind sharing a little bit about your background? Because most people know you through your page, um, but they may not know much about you personally. Would you mind sharing just a little bit about your background uh, to provide some context to the conversation? Thank you. Yeah, sure. So um, I live in Washington State in the United States of America. For anybody that's not um, local, um, and I will be 37. <laughs> in June. I'm really excited about that. (laughs) Um, I have a husband and a little boy who just turned five. And um, I pretty much just been doing, I do a lot of ministry. I've been doing it my whole life. Um, I've been doing music ministry ever since I was four and I started joining the choir and then I went to the praise teams and then I just moved up, you know, it just went from there. And um, I'm one of the music directors in my church and the children's choir director Um, I do also do children's ministry and, um, all the things that go with that, like puppet ministry and all that, um, sort of thing. And I do do some, um, beyond my social media that you all see. I also do like graphics and things like that for my church and run certain events and things, um, like that. So very heavily involved in ministry, um, for many years. And, um, I also do have a secular job where, um, I am in the banking field. Mm. That's about all I can say about that, but, (laughs) um, where I do banking and, um, and yeah, I've raised in church and, um, you know, that, (laughs) people are like, Oh, you're so blessed. You're raised in church and you are, you're so blessed. But, Mm -hmm. um, doesn't mean you don't have experiences. Doesn't mean you haven't gone through things, but I've been raised in church. I've been super blessed with that. Been super blessed to, to know who the Lord is my whole life and then have a, uh, develop a personal relationship with him and a personal understanding of who he was and who he is. Um, and now I'm just doing my best to, instill it in others and encourage people as I encourage myself and, um, seeing where it takes me. That's awesome. So have you always been in the Northwest? I have. Yeah. I'm born and raised in Washington. Um, I did move to California for a little bit to see if the grass was greener on the other (laughs) side and it was not. (laughs) So I actually, um, I moved down to Stockton just to live. I didn't intend on going to Bible college there. I did end up taking some Bible college courses, um, because they wanted me to be in the choir. Um, so, uh, I did end up taking Bible college classes, but that I just moved there to live. And, you know, I, I left and I told the Lord, I'm not coming back, I'm not going back unless you drag me. Well, he dragged me. So <laughs> I was like, get me out of here <laughs> because every, my whole world was like crumbling around me. And I was just like, <sighs> and so I was like, well, I, d- I did pray that you would make me lose everything to come if I wanted me to come home. So, um, I did, I, I came home and I've been here ever since. And, you know, it's just where the Lord's called me for however long. That's awesome. I- I've never been able to make it up there. I've made it 
as far west as California and as far north, I think, as San Francisco area, just north of that. Uh, mm -hmm. We've always wanted to travel up to Washington or Oregon, especially Oregon. I, I love um, uh, running and, and Nike and all of that. So it'd be really cool to get up there, but beautiful country up where you live. Pretty yes, amazing. It yeah. Is. yeah, very beautiful. Lots of green, lots of mountains, lots of waterfalls. Just our state in particular is pretty cool because one half of the state is very green and luscious. And then right when you pass over the mountains, it turns into like farmland and it's mm. really hot and a lot of hills. And so you kind of, our, our state, is pretty big and it's cool how like you we kind of get a little bit of everything in one one state yeah yeah you don't have to leave <laughs> yeah exactly well I, I mentioned at the start of this conversation that we've been following your page my wife and i and the first video i think i saw of yours um the darling on on a dime uh, account the first time video i saw of yours i think she showed me that your holy spirit activate video <laughs> <laughs> Was, did that one blow up? I, I was trying to find it, actually. I wanted to find the original uh, to make sure I hadn't imagined that, but I'm pretty sure that was the first <laughs> one that, that I'd seen of you. It was hilarious. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that's a lot. That's pretty far down my list because um, it was a while back. I think I think it, at, at the time for me, did blow up. I think it was probably at 12,000 mm. 12, likes, which for me at the time was like, it's huge. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was massive. So yeah. Yeah. That was a good one. <laughs> so, so what is the actual genesis of, of your journey as a content creator? You've talked about how that you're, and you still are very much involved in ministry, involved in children's ministry, music ministry. Uh, what, what made you decide to start an account um, that would be beyond just a personal account? Um, basically the fact that all of my ministries were gone because of the pandemic. So mm. 2020 hit. And um, we weren't allowed to go anywhere. We weren't allowed to do anything. Washington in particular was very strict um, in that regard. And um, I needed something to do with all my energy and my worry and my thoughts and <clears throat> all those things. Um, because at the time, I was also trying to do the stay-at-home mom thing. I was trying to like see if I could make that work for me. Um, and eventually I ended up getting the job I have now during the pandemic, but, um, I, I wanted something to do with all my time and energy and my thoughts. And, and so I just started, um, fashion blogging. I was mm -hmm. like, I want to get some free shirts. I mean, really, that's like how it started. <laughs> I was like, I want some free shirts and I want some free clothes. So I'm not spending all this money. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, and on top of it, you don't see a lot of plus size, apostolic women, um, sharing where they get their clothes. Um, because there's a lot of shame that comes with being plus size. You feel very outcasted. You feel very unwanted. You feel very undesirable, ugly. And as apostolic women, we already struggle with that because, uh, we're, di we're different. We have, we dress differently. We look different. We don't get to do all the things that the world gets to do as far as, you know, how they beautify themselves. And so that can tend to make us feel unattractive, especially, this is a whole side note, but especially when apostolic men date women that aren't apostolic. Yeah, and so right, there's just a exactly. lot of, there's a lot of influences. That's a whole side thing I could do, man. But there's a lot of side, there's a lot of influences that come um, into an apostolic woman's mind already. So add on top of it, the insecurity of being plus size and you're just like, it's a double whammy and um, mm -hmm. society and people and movies and television, all that just uh, constantly slowly reiterate, you know, that you're the bottom of the barrel. You're the bottom of the dating barrel. You're the bottom of this, you're the bottom of that. And so, um, a lot of women punish themselves, I, for lack of a better word, by dressing in sacks or dressing in over huge clothing that, you know, don't, doesn't flatter them at all. Um, and the fashion business kind of perpetuates that story by making those things, like mm. especially streamlined fashion. Um, so I have been able to find different um, websites and brands and companies that um, actually were stylish for us. Mm. And so I wanted to share those because I wanted other women to 
realized that they didn't have to stay in this little box and that they could dress how they wanted, you know, within our, you know, our modesty. Um, they could dress how they wanted and they didn't have to be, you know, a specific size to do that. And I just kind of wanted to share where I got those things. And um, so that's just what I started doing. I just started sharing my outfits and letting women know that they were worth it. And at the same time, letting myself know it was worth it because I too had that mindset. <clears throat> mm. I was talking to myself and I was being the person that I wish I had right. growing up as a young person. Mm. So, um, as you know, an example to look at. So that's just basically where it started from. And it just, here it yeah, is now. So, so that, uh, I mean, I guess your initial idea was a bit niche. It, it mm -hmm. wasn't uh, as as able to reach as broadly as you are now. At right. what point did you start mixing comedy into that? Because you, you were doing this and then ultimately you ended up mixing comedy, in, which has helped you continue to expand uh, your reach. Yeah. Um, uh, there was always TikTok. I didn't like TikTok. Um, so I never went that, I never did mm -hmm. that. Um, but then Facebook, excuse me, Instagram came out with reels and I was like, well, that's like TikTok. And I was like, and I'm already on Instagram. I already had, you know, uh, I think I had about like anywhere from like 1200 to like 1800, 2000 people at the time. Um, and humor has been part of my life since I was little. So I was like, well, maybe I can show that side of myself. <clears throat> so I made my first reel and it was, which ironically enough, because he follows me now and I call him my bestie because we talk all the time, but it was Eddie James's song, um, I've Got a Fire. And it was just like apostolic singles be like, and then the song was like, <laughs> I got a fire burning inside of me. <laughs> and that's all it was. And it got several hundred likes which was a lot when your account was a small like smaller like mm -hmm. that yeah, getting sure. like 400 500 likes was actually quite a bit for an account that had like 2000 followers right. um so i was like oh, that did pretty good and so i was like maybe i'll try another one so i just tried them and tried them and mixed them in and here we are yeah is there any sort of uh this is random, but is there any sort of like formula? Like, have you noticed that there's some that, cause I notice on your page there's some that like do really, really well. And then others, not so much. Have you noticed a formula with, with the reels or is it just whatever, whatever you put out there? It's pretty random. Um, <laughs> there's no real formula. I mean, there's tips and tricks, you know, CTAs, which are call to actions, you know, like this, right. like, you know, do that. Um, having the, closed captioning um really helps but back at back then i didn't have any of that and they did really now it's because more people are doing it the standard is a little bit higher mm -hmm. um but really it was authenticity is what right. it boiled down to is why people liked my stuff and why people started following me and what i heard the most was you're you're just being you you're just yeah. being i feel like i'm actually looking at you and experiencing you not mm. like a version yeah, exactly. of yourself. Um, and so I, when people ask me about reels and how to make them big and all that jazz, I just say, you know, practice so that you, your mouth is on sync because there's nothing worse than your mouth not matching. So there's a level of like practice and learning the timing and all of that. Um, and learning the script so that it's in your head. Um, so that you can add all the funny body movements and the faces and stuff and just truly being you, like not trying to mm. be me, not trying to be somebody else, but just your face, your humor, your voice. Um, and yeah, just be yourself because people yeah. like that. People can see. Yeah. And I think like with you, it's just, it's just who you are. And so it works, you know, yeah. uh, you, you don't Lucky. have to put it on. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so when did you realize that this was something you actually wanted to pursue, that it wasn't just, uh, cause you, you've turned into a, a bit of a small business and, mm -hmm. um, when did you think that, that you had sort of crossed a barrier where it was just something you were doing for fun or something you're doing about fashion blogging and then something you actually wanted to pursue? Yeah. My first, um, 
my first collab was with am I uh, am I allowed to say like companies names and it yeah for sure yeah okay uh, was with Chosen Vessels Inc and they were my first like real collab and I was like oh my word I can't believe they want me you know I was just I couldn't believe it and um, they would send me their shirts and I'd make the posts for them and I was like oh yeah you know it's happening <laughs> and then I would slowly get more people hopping on board and then um because my reels were starting to go more viral i hit 10,000 once i hit 10,000 followers i was able to start earning money mm. um from instagram it's itself paying me for um for my reels and stuff um so that's when it officially became like a oh i can make some serious money off of this um, not including the collabs that I was getting. So um, probably around like, you know, when I started hitting like five to 10,000 followers and the collabs started coming in and then I uh, found out I could start getting paid and bringing all this extra income in for my family. That's when it, I, you know, really put twice as much time and effort into it. Yeah. And and then on top of all of that, you have the, the reason you originally did it. So the reason you're pursuing it more is is that side, but then the original was to help people, to reach out mm -hmm. to people. And and the bigger you grow, the more people you can reach out to. Yes. Uh, did you, I, I saw recently you were close to 200,000. Did you, did you cross it? I you did. did? Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. I did. <laughs> I'm at like 200 and like I'm like at 200,000 and like 200 <laughs> now. Oh, <so>. wow. <laughs> yeah. So I'm pretty excited. That's a big, you know, that's a big deal. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, I think last week we were about to record and, and we had to push it off to the next week because some things are happening where I was recording. But um, I think you were like 199,000. So I was I was hoping that I could like claim that, you know, we just did that little nudge to push you <laughs> over the edge. <laughs> Well, you can nudge me to 121 <laughs> <laughs> or more. <laughs> uh, well, a, f a few weeks ago, um, we had an episode where I talked to Simeon Costa about God mm -hmm. dreams. Did you actually know him? So you you lived in Stockton. Did you know him beforehand? I did very, very, very uh, third, fourth person. You know, okay, like yeah. we kind of knew. I don't even think he knew me, but I was more aware of him because mm -hmm. then he was of me at the time. Um, and then we like had like a few like back and forth on Facebook at the time, but that's kind of how we know each other most, mostly. Um, he probably knows me better now. But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It was very like distantly. Oh, well, I know that guy, you know? Yeah. I understand. Yeah. And uh, so he was talking to us uh, about God dreams and the importance of that. And what I really loved about that is he was talking about it from a different perspective. It wasn't just about preaching a pulpit or music or children's ministry, which you're doing all of that as well. Um, but it was trying to think outside the box. How how can I uh, make an impact in the world beyond just those things? Yes, some of us may be called to do that, but then others of us may be called to do other things. And so... I guess that leads me to this question. Why do you feel it's important to have apostolic content creators or fashion designers um, and, and that they're actually pursuing something that's of God? It's not something that's selfish, but it's something that, that is part of their holistic dream. Um, yeah, I mean, absolutely. We need to have apostolic influence in every single aspect of this world. Um, because in every single job and every single part of this world, there there are people who need to hear about Jesus. And that includes the fashion. Now, the fashion business is a whole beast among yeah. itself. You know, like if you're going to be on that, man, that's going to be who that's going to be tough because of everything that the fashion they all stand for, you know, like but we still need that light there. Um, and, you know, and it might look different. You might not be Gucci or Prada or whatever. Um, but you can still be within that business. And I mean, how are we going to have any clothes to wear? <laughs> you know, modest clothing, if we don't have apostolic designers, um, right. how are we going to have, you know, a lot of my friends at church are nurses and they talk about 
how they pray with their patients who are dying. You know, there's that there's that apostolic influence in there um, with social media. Your kids are going to be on you and your kids are going to be on social media probably no matter what. So you might as well have some apostolic artists and some apostolic influencers in there that you can focus your your family on and focus your kids on. That's why we have Fountain. I'm a mm-hmm. part of that. You know, it's it, because there has to be an apostolic version of everything yeah. basically. Mm-hmm. Um, cause you know, and it, it, it's very frustrating because we've had people say things like, Oh, you're being selfish or, Oh, you're from other apostolics. Oh, you're just out for yourself and, and things like that. And that's just really not true. And it's, it's, it's harmful to those of us who are trying to do this and who mm-hmm. want to do it because it feels like a, you know, they're assuming our intentions and those aren't our intentions. Um, I mean, I can't speak for everyone, but right, yeah, all the people that I have been in contact with, um, all of the influencers, influencers that I've gotten to know um, personally have tremendous hearts and mm. they're out there spreading the gospel and man, we're getting slammed for it too. And to be slammed, you're going to get slammed by the world. We don't need to get slammed by our brothers and sisters as well. And, um, He's absolutely right. Not everything looks like a pulpit ministry. Not everything looks like in the four doors of the church. You know, you're you're reaching a certain demographic inside your church. There's, I mean, I've, my highest reach has been 7 million people. Wow. That's insane. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 7 million people saying my real about Jesus. I, I don't know of any church that's running 7 million. Mm-hmm. And um, I have been able to reach that many people for, for Jesus. It's incredible. It's humbling. It's, it's crazy. I, I had, um, somebody reach out to me and be like, Oh man, I can't get past 10 K. Can't get past 10 K. I'm so frustrated. I can't get past it. And I'm like, you gotta think of it this way. That's 10,000 people that the Lord has entrusted you with. That's 10,000 people. How many churches, you know, run 10,000, none, (laughs) you know, Maybe two, one. I don't even know if any do. But uh, you, if you look at it from the viewpoint of these are souls that I'm reaching. These are souls that are seeing my content. These are souls that I'm reaching and showing and sharing the gospel. Um, and it might not look like your ministry and that doesn't negate. It doesn't negate it just because mm-hmm. it doesn't look normal or you don't understand it. You don't have to understand it. God's given it to that person and you don't have to understand it, it's, you know? Yeah. So, um, it's, it's, it's just extremely important. I've had, I've reached so many people that I would have never, ever been able to reach. Um, I've reached people from different communities, from ex apostolics that are like, you know, I, I, I left apostolic faith, but man, I, I ran across you. For some reason, the algorithm showed me you. And I'm thinking, oh, I wonder why, you know. And uh, and they're like, and you reminded me of God's love. Somebody literally wrote that to me. She's like, I left the church. I started a different lifestyle. And she's like, and you just you just reminded me that God loves me. And I was mm-hmm. like, uh, you know, tears. Just these messages I get about you just reminding me God loves me. I get... <clears throat> apostolics writing me, oh, my back, you know, my backslidden sister or my sister or my brother who I'm trying to, been trying to reach, they actually showed me your reel and said, is this girl apostolic? She looks apostolic. Is she one of you? And they're like, yeah, she is. And they're like, well, she's really funny. I follow her and I've been watching her. And you know, that, that stuff gets, mm-hmm. gets in there little by little. And, and they're reminded about the word and they're reminded about God's love and they're reminded that God is following them and watching them and, and they laugh along the way and it, it breaks the, the laughter breaks down the barriers that would have been there if they had, they been in church, you mm. know, these people, they're going to go to church. <sighs> they're preaching at me walls straight up. The laughter just brings those walls down and then, you know, they could watch a funny one and then they could watch a serious one. Cause usually if you're watching one, you're going to watch like two or three more. And, um, you just, there's no limit. There's no limits on God. There's no limit to how we can use you. There's no limit on how he's going to use you through that. I would have never thought God was going to use me through Instagram, not 
in a million years. That was never in my life plan. Oh yes, the Lord's going to make me an Instagram teacher. <laughs> you know, that was never <laughs> in my thought process. Um, but he did it and he did it really sneaky. He did it real sneaky too. Um, to where I looked back and I was like, what? <laughs> You're making all my dreams come true through like all these things, these desires of my heart, you know, come true through something so like Instagram. Okay. All right. I see. I see what you did there. You know? So you just, you don't put any limits on God as long as you're, you know, just keep those intentions pure. That's between you and God. Keep those intentions pure and he can use you. And Simeon's actually absolutely right. He can use you in any way possible. And I like what Simeon said about the closer you draw to God, he'll give you the desires of your heart, physically, mm. like give them to you so that your desires line up with his. That, mm. that was, that was great. I was like, absolutely. Yeah, you know, it's so not good. so much, Oh, I'll give you the car or the whatever, but he's going to literally give you the desires themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple of things that you touched on there that, that I think are really important is um, having an alternative, you know, that, and again, you mentioned fountain and, and there's others out there, but having an alternative for people to go to. And, and if there are a number of people who are apostolic that are, that these people are following, that young people are following, or that, you know, middle-aged people uh, are following, uh, then their feed is full of the things of God and not full of all this other stuff. And so, you know, that was one of the things that was behind me starting this podcast was thinking about in between Sundays. You know, there's so much. I, I listen to podcasts all the time. So obviously I'm I'm someone with an appetite for it. There's got to be other people that have that appetite and why not fill it with something that's godly or something that's going to help us to grow or challenge us or inspire us, you know, as opposed to just being entertained. And I think that's so good. And, and to not put, uh, to not limit God in, in what he wants to do in us and through us. Right. You know, you, you had this personality before you had uh, these talents before, and then you just found a, a medium to where, it can influence more people and, and it's not influencing people so that you can be so-and-so, but right. you're influencing them for God. You're very apostolic in your presentation and you're, and you're very Good. godly Good. You know, in, in what you do, you know, uh, you're not hiding anything. Uh, right. You, you want to be all that you can be for him. Um, what's one piece of advice that you would give someone who is desiring to do something, maybe not like you, but something that's, um, you know, out of the box, something that's unorthodox for God. Um, go for it, man. Just, just go for it and, and be ready. Um, especially, uh, especially if it's going to be like uh, social media, you need to make sure you are fully aware of the darkness that will come after you. Mm. Um, a lot of people don't talk about it and it's something I'm going to be talking about at some, in some different things coming up throughout the year and next year. Um, because content creators or want, you know, aspiring content creators, um, need to understand that <laughs> my, this lady in my church told me this, and I think it was the best compliment I ever got. She came up to me and she holds me and she goes, you know, the devil just must hate you. And I was like, yes. <laughs> like <laughs> that is the goal. The devil hates me. I was like, he should hate me. He, he should just be like, Oh, I don't like that girl, you know? And you have to understand that when you are putting yourself out there and you're trying to draw people away from him, you are going to get a darkness that comes after you. Like you don't expect. And the internet and social media is an extremely dark place. And you have to be ready for that to come against you. You have to be ready for the comments. You have to be ready for the onslaught. When things go viral, you're going to get an onslaught most likely, especially if your content is Christian. Like you're, you know, you're not doing something that's more like um, generic, you know, yeah. where they don't necessarily know what you believe. If you're doing something that's very spiritually um, honed in on a certain mm. belief system, especially Christianity, because Nobody has a problem with you until they find out you're a Christian. You could believe anything, but if they find out you, you're a Christian, oh, that's not all right. Um, so you just have to be, you really need to be aware that it's out there and it will come at you. 
and mm. you have to be ready for it. Um, and if you, you need to take a lot of, um, you need to have some self-awareness and you need to really look at yourself and be like, can I handle that? And you need to be really honest with yourself. Can I really handle the darkness? Mm. And you may not be able to at the time. You might have to grow some and and try again later uh, when you've prayed or, you know, you've done some work on yourself or, or you just might not be, it just might not be for you. And you might have to figure out what you're going to do in a different route. Um, but you have to really take a look at yourself and be like, am I truly ready for the darkness? And mm. um, I have several people who check on me and they're like, how are you doing? How's your mental health? I'm, I'm praying for you. You know, do you need me to pray for you about something specific? Um, because they know what I get daily and yeah. you just, you really have to be ready for it. There are girls that have reached out to me and been like, dude, I posted one reel about my hair where they, all they're doing is standing there showing their beautiful hair and showing how to do a beautiful hair updo with long hair. Mm. And it goes viral because the hair is beautiful. And of course, a lot of people really like it. And she's like, I could not believe the things that were being said to me just about, you're so ugly. Chop all your hair off. That hair is disgusting. You look stupid. You just, I mean, just like, boom, boom, boom. It's just hateful and it's darkness and it's, they're throwing insecurity at you and they're throwing your beliefs in your face about how you're this or that. I mean, you have, and, and she's like, it was insane to me. Um, mm. and I said, that's, that's the darkness. And you have to be, you have to really, that's my, that's my first thing. Before you do anything, you have to make sure that you can handle that. Yeah. Really take a look inside and, and truly not, not be like, well, I just really want to be an influencer. It ain't worth it. If you can't handle it, your mental health, your spiritual health, your emotional health, it's not worth being an influencer or whatever. If you truly can't handle it um, and it's going to send you into a depression or make you question things or what is it ain't worth it. Mm. So find a different avenue, you know, <clears throat> but my, that's my main piece of advice. Please be ready. Please understand what you're getting into. It's not all fun and games. It's not all glamorous. It's not all clabs and money and free things. And oh, she's so, no, she, it's not all that in a bag of chips. There's a lot of, darkness and negativity that comes with it. Um, so truly being ready for that. Um, and, uh, just making sure your intentions are, are pure and good and letting God, you know, work through you and just making, cleaning out your heart and making sure you're, you're doing everything for the right reasons and, you know, he'll bless it. Yeah. I, I think the intention there will help you deal with the other stuff thankfully mm -hmm. you know through our platform we haven't really experienced all of that because i guess we're a bit still more niche um you know we've had a number of videos do well but mm -hmm. uh, i think the people who are interacting with our content are people who you know are inspired by that sort of thing or um it, it's not as mainstream as some of the stuff you do you know it's comedy uh mm -hmm. it's funny you know and uh, you're using sounds as well we don't use sounds which is another reason probably why we don't get to interact with those sorts of wonderful people but I, you know, i've seen it you know i've seen just on even small videos i'll see apostolic just coming after each other and it's just like oh, yes. it's unreal it's like man oh yeah these are real people behind these screens that you're commenting to and that you're that you're talking about yeah i saw one of this on apostolic stuff is i think worse to me oh it's unreal because yeah that that feels worse to me <clears throat> because they're supposed to be the people that support you and love you the most mm. and you know Susie nobody can tell me I'm fat or stupid all day long but if another apostolic sister tells you know just says the meanest thing to me I'm just like come on mm. like don't say anything because it's just, you know, 
and now everyone's like, oh, it's jealousy, blah, blah, blah. That doesn't help, you know? No, I don't, I don't know that it's jealousy, honestly. I don't want to say, oh, they're just jealous of me. Because that just feels arrogant in, in and of itself. Um, but it just... Apostolics really need to lift each other up and support each other and understand that not everybody's journey is the same within the movement. Mm. And as long as you're preaching doctrine back off, mm. you know, not everybody's journey is going to look like you. You're not going to understand everybody's ministries and journeys. And, you know, you're never going to agree with anybody a hundred percent. Anybody. Yeah. You know, you, you can even read the Bible and just be like, oh, you know, oh. <laughs> you know, so even you're fighting Jesus, even you don't even, you know, <laughs> you don't even agree with him a hundred percent. So just understand that you're not going to agree with every single thing I say. I'm not going to agree with every single thing anybody says. It's just not how it works. So just overall support your brothers and sisters, like their stuff, encourage them in the Lord. Be like, you know, awesome job. Way to go. Mm. I really try to encourage. I want my brothers and sisters to win and succeed and to reach the lost and to thrive. And that's really where we all need to be at. Yeah. Because the, yeah. The, like you said, the apostolic on apostolic, that's really. Yeah, it's tough. That's, that's <laughs> it really a pet is. peeve. Yeah. <laughs> As yeah. you can tell. Oh, no, I, I totally, <laughs> I can totally understand that. And, um, but you know, it, it is awesome to see what you're doing and, and how God's using you and and how the platform continues to grow. And you can continue to reach people each and every week. Um, maybe not necessarily with Acts 2.38 in every post, but uh, you're reaching them through your lifestyle. You're reaching them through your example of, of being being that epistle that is read by all men. They're able to read and, and see, you know, uh, Jesus through you. So it's awesome what you're doing. Uh, I, I want to ask you this question. I ask you, I ask this to every single person who comes on the podcast. What is it that drives you when it comes to ministry? What is it that is that driving force for you? The move of God, mm. the move of God. I, I, I tear up almost think just talking about it. Um, I want God to move. Mm. I want God to heal. I want God to restore redeem, change lives. I want people to know him. I want people to feel him. I want people to be changed. I want the power of God. I want people to understand his love. Um, like I said, growing up in this, I didn't even fully understand God's love. I had issues believing that God loved me because of the flaws that I saw. Um, so if I had issue with that, hearing about it every day, I can't imagine other people have, yeah. you know, who didn't hear it every single day. I want people to understand that it's, it's real and mm. it's not fake. It's not made up. It's not, it's not just something we do, something we say it's real, it's authentic and it can 100% change your life. And it doesn't mean your life is free from trials and free from things. If anything, you might even get some more. Because, mm. you know, you're you're trying to do something right. And Satan doesn't want you to go to heaven. I know that's shocking. But he does not want you to go to heaven. His sole purpose in this time is to destroy you. That's mm. his only goal. His only purpose is to destroy you and to rip God's children from his arms. and And throw them where they don't belong. Um, and anything I can do to ruin that agenda, I'm going to do. And, mm. um, no matter what that looks like, any, in any capacity that God wants to use me, I'm going to do it. Um, and no matter what it looks like, it's probably what led me to this, but, mm. um, my, driving force is reaching people and and on un, them understanding who God is and that he's not this I mean yes he deserves respect and reverence but he's not so that we can't approach him boldly that we can't just talk to him that we can't just tell him what we're feeling and tell him what he knows already but 
that we can't just have that really personal relationship with them and just give them all the bleh, all the mess and mm. he can do something with it. We don't have to pray in the King James version. We can pray in the new living. <laughs> you know, like we I don't want Christianity to seem so up you know, so hard yeah. atta- unattainable. There's my word. So Mm -hmm. unattainable. God is attainable. He is right there. He is right with you. He is laughing at the jokes. He is everything we experience. He experienced because we're created in his sight. You know, we're created, we were created like him. Um, Mm -hmm. And so he thinks things are funny. He, I mean, he's funny in the Bible all the time. You just read that and you're like, you just crack me up. Like, you know, he experienced anger. He experienced frustration. He experienced sat deep sadness in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was, oh, uh, you know, he was scared. He he's dealt with fear. He's dealt with everything, and he's not too far from our grasp. Mm-hmm. You're not too far from his grasp. He does not have hateful thoughts towards you, and that's that's what I push. I push. Christianity is fun. Christianity is authentic. Christianity is, is for you. It can change you. If the power of God is real because I just, I just want people to be changed. I just want people to come to the Lord. And if I have that much of a part in helping somebody find him, then I'm, I'm so happy mm. about that. I, I wept at lady. We were just at ladies conference and a lady had written me on my DMs. I get these all the time where people are like, oh, my so-and-so is moving to a different state. Can you help me find an apostolic church they can go to? Well, this lady happened to be moving to Washington and she asked if there were any cer- certain churches in a certain area that she could go to. And I was like, yeah, sure. I found one for her, gave her all the information. And I usually don't hear or see any resolution because I just don't. And I was at Ladies Retreat and this woman was smiling at me. So I smiled back. You know, everyone's, you know, they know who I am. And so I get a lot of, of that. But um, she was smiling at me. And I was, you know, I smiled back at her. And she was, I'm the lady who you needed to find that church for in that city. And as she goes, the church that you gave my, I think it was her friend or my sister, um, is the church I go to now. Wow. And it was awesome. so nice. It was almost like God let me see that it it does come to fruition in some way. And I started crying and I just said, I'm just, I'm so thankful you told me that. I said, I don't ever get to see if what I tell people or do, you know, I don't always get to see the end result if it mm. makes a change. And she's sitting here in ladies retreat, worshiping and dancing and praying and going to the church that I recommended. And I was just like, oh. That was just like a little bit of, of me getting to help somebody. And just that little bit is completely worth it. You know, Mm -hmm. the fact that I had like four people that weren't apostolics buy apostolic study Bibles because (laughs) they wanted to know the best study Bible. And I was like, apostolic study Bible right there. (laughs) That's awesome. Yeah. These people get to read a Bible that has apostolic, you know, Mm message has this apostolic notes in it and they can really, you know, it'll help them discern the truth out of it. it. It's just, that's what drives me is, is really just helping people towards Jesus. That, that's awesome. It, this has been a, a great conversation. I really appreciate you coming on and, and setting time aside and, and doing the whole reschedule. That's my first <laughs> time doing that. So I appreciate you, you uh, bearing with me on that one, but, um, Really have enjoyed it, and thank you for your time. I do like to end all these conversations by giving the guest a, a final word, something to share with the audience. So if you wouldn't mind, uh, Kristen, sharing something uh, with our audience here today. And again, thank you for your time with us. Of course. I, I'm sure I've shared too much. But <laughs> um, <laughs> just be be encouraged in your times of, of waiting, in your times of not understanding where your calling is um, in your times of not understanding where the Lord's voice is when he seems quiet and distant and you're holding on to dreams and promises from years ago and desires 
to be used. Just learn in the waiting, keep holding on, um, keep allowing yourself to be molded and changed and keep your desires. I, I know I've said it a lot, but keep your desires pure and your motives pure and don't let bitterness creep in or anger for more than a moment. I understand frustration and anger if you feel stuck, but don't let it dig so deep into you that it changes you, that it changes your intentions. It changes, you know, don't let it fester and change. If you, if you have, if you have a wound, you seal it up. You know, you don't just let an open wound stay open. And if you do, you're going to get disease and it's going to cover your entire body and you're going to be seriously ill or die. It's the same spiritually. In the waiting, a lot of times we can feel angry or alone and it can, or we can feel wounded or offended. And if we don't cover those things up and heal them, um, they can become serious spiritual wounds that can get disease in them and can spread throughout our body. And if he feels far away, he's not. He's very close by. And I've been there. I understand it. And just know as someone who has been there and has come out on the other side that God is faithful. And he truly will use you. Um, he's not rejecting you. He has called you. He has a calling for everyone and a purpose for everyone. And if you don't know what that purpose and calling is, I mean, we all have a basic calling and purpose and that's to win the loss. That's everybody's calling and everybody's purpose. But in that waiting of maybe finding a specific calling, just trust and lean on him. If you already know what it is and you're waiting for doors to open, figure out what God's teaching you in the waiting. He might just be teaching you to have faith and trust in him. And, um, you know, certain circumstances and situations might need to be in the right time for you to really be truly um, effective. And just trust him and know that he wants to use you and he will use you. Just keep holding on to the faith. Keep doing what you know is right. Keep obeying the Lord. Keep pleasing the Lord. As long as you're pleasing the Lord, you're doing the right thing. And in everything you do, please the Lord. Obey the Lord. Do whatever he calls you to do. Do whatever he asks of you because God loves obedience. He loves an obedient heart. And I just encourage you, anybody who's in the waiting... Just keep on going, keep on holding on, keep on trusting, keep on believing, and um, it will happen for you. <laughs>